Okay, hi everybody. In this quick video, uh, we're just going to start talking about deriving parallel task graphs. We've spent time in class talking about what parallel task graphs are. Uh, and now we want to start thinking about how our own code uh, can represent a parallel task graph, how we can extract a parallel task graph out of code, uh, and how that parallel task graph can help us write our parallel programs or analyze our parallel programs. Uh, and so we'll just talk about this for a few minutes to help build some intuition, and then in class we will do more advanced examples. Uh, so deriving PTGs. So you'll see I have some very simple code here. We have a loop. Uh, we start with i equals 1. Uh, i is less than some n and i plus plus. And we have an array a. And we will just assume that array has n elements. Uh, and again, notice we start at 1 here. So ai is going to be equal to... Um, the sum of itself and a i minus one. So a i will be, um, whatever value is in a i will be added to the value of a minus one. So you can imagine for zero, for a zero, uh, if the value is three and a one starts as five, then a one will become five plus three because this three is up here. Uh, A2 will become, uh, let's say it starts at two for the sake of argument. Uh, so then it will be A plus five plus two, or plus three, because that's what our previous value was. So you get 10, you get eight, uh, and you keep going. And so the last element will actually be the sum of all of the elements. Uh, and every element will be the sum of every element before it. So uh, this is a very simple program. Uh, it's a little bit of a toy example, but it's a good one to start with. So you could say, um, you know, the value, if we have a node in our parallel task graph, and we will call this node i equals 2. Uh, so i equals 2 here, to compute i equals 2, we really depend on the value of i equals 1. Uh, so we will create a dependency here. And likewise, i actually depends on, our, sorry, i equals 1 depends on i equals 0. Now, in this case, i equals 0 is initiated somewhere up here. Uh, so this is sort of a trivial dependency, but it's still a dependency. So this is, a, i equals 2 depends on 1 directly. Uh, and i equals 1 depends, or i equals 2 depends on i equals 0 transitively, and we've used these words in class already, uh, and you could continue this, right? Uh, i equals 3, uh, and so your dependencies are just going to be attached to every element through n. Um, if you wanted to make up some processing time, you could assume that you know, each step takes one time step. It would be a relative time step. It would be how long this takes. Uh, but then you can do your basic analysis that you would want to do. Uh, you know that your uh, runtime is basically going to be n, uh, which is the same thing as your algorithmic complexity in this case. Uh, in other cases, it may not be a constant operation. You may define a different time. Uh, but anyway, and this is a very simple example. Uh, every value in this array is dependent on its previous value. So every iteration of i depends on the previous iteration of i. So we have to compute these in order. This is a good example of a program that is pretty hard to parallelize because you would really need to know all of the preceding values first. Uh, anyway, that kind of wraps up this video. Uh, there's not much else to talk about. The intuition is just that well, you needed a prior value to compute your new value, so you have a dependency. Uh, in any case, uh, that's it for this one. We'll do more advanced examples in class, but thanks for watching.